Welcome to the Skeptic's Guide to Investing with Steve Davenport and Clem Miller. Every two weeks, Steve and Clem bring you brief investment insights you may not find anywhere else. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Here are Steve and Clem. Back in October. Welcome, everyone, to Skeptic's Guide to Investing. I'm Steve Davenport, and I'm here with Clem Miller. And today we're going to talk about what to expect for the rest of uh, 2024. This uh, this year has been some ups and some downs and some all arounds, but we are looking at the rest of the year saying we, we're not sure how we're going to go from here. And I think that when we look at this issue of a six month time horizon, we realize it's it's really a very short time and you shouldn't make too many decisions based on a six month time horizon. But there are some things in this fall season and winter that are going to be significant for portfolios. And the most significant I'd say would be the presidential election and the House and Senate races, because I don't think one is um, as significant without the other. And I think that as we go through the fall and winter, we're also continuing to follow issues uh, of geopolitics and issues with inflation and issues with the Fed. And uh, I believe that we are going to see markets probably react um, with some negatives and with some positives. But it's very hard for us to sit here and say, um, we don't notice valuations being high and we don't notice um, there being some opportunities with names that are, I'll, I'll call it, uh, boring and steady. And I think that sometimes we want to go for the, the hot new um, concepts like um, obesity drugs and like AI, but we also have to have some, you know, Coca-Cola and some uh, some other names that uh, Estee Lauder in the beauty space that will also deliver for us in ways that we think are beneficial in terms of correlation. So as we walk out for the rest of the year, Clem, I know you're not going to make a lot of decisions based on six months, but when you look out, what do you see as the most important thing for investors to be focused on as they think about um, the next six months. So I think we're probably going to see a continuation of what we've seen in the last few weeks, which is a market that overall has been fairly flat, uh, but with some, you know, quite frequent ups and downs in terms of volatility. So in other words, I don't think we're going to see the kind of big surge uh, that we saw earlier in the, in the year and uh, and really um, you know late last year as well. I just think it's going to uh, it's going to be relatively flat. Now, why do I say that? Uh, I say that because I think that the expectations uh, that people that investors have had regarding uh, the Fed's actions to reduce rates are already largely priced in. I think that, uh, in fact, you don't really hear as much about that now that the Fed has clearly signaled that you know it's going to be on uh, a rate reduction trend. So I think that that a lot of that is priced in, and now we're seeing you know the markets sort of uh, yawning uh, at discussion about the Fed. Uh, so I I just you know, I don't see much in the way of that kind of macro uh, push. Uh, also, we're seeing a little bit of unsteadiness in the underlying economy itself. Now, that obviously helps with the Fed decision, but you know, at the same time, you know, a, a weaker underlying economy hurts some sectors and and may hurt the overall stock index or keep it from keep it from rising a lot. Um, and then third, um, you know, we've talked a lot in these podcasts about AI, but 
But I would say that I think uh, AI valuations have gotten a little out of hand. Uh, and um, and I think that, that you know, a continued pullback on that will continue to uh, constrain growth on markets. So yeah, I, I don't see another surge. Uh, I don't see a big fall, but I don't see a, a big surge. I just see, you know, kind of flattish uh, with some, you know, with some day-to-day -day volatility that, you know, I would recommend to folks not to get overly concerned about because, you know, if you've got a big drop like we had uh, in yesterday's market, and we're doing this on uh, a Wednesday and the market dropped a lot on Tuesday. Uh, I think, you know, every expectation would be that that would get reversed on the following day or the following couple of days. So I, I, I'm not too concerned about that. Now, the other big issue you raised, Steve, is the issue of politics and what happens with the election. And, you know, with any kind of binomial, at least on the presidential side, well, with the whole thing, right? You've got three binomial decisions here. Right. Uh, so you could end up with six different scenarios. Uh, and, um, you know, the biggest of all is the presidency. And and right now, you know, despite Harris uh, apparently taking a, a popular vote lead and and uh, it being sort of a tie on the Electoral College, um, you know, that's sort of up in the air where that's going to go now. Who's better for investments, uh, Harris or uh, uh, or Trump? Yeah, that's kind of the issue that I think is is in the front of people's minds because yeah. I don't think we've really determined, you know, uh, much in terms of recommendations for people to. I mean, I I look at it as simply, look, interest rates are coming down, therefore some of the money we've been make in the in the safety of Treasuries at four or five percent is not going to be there anymore because we're going to get closer to two and a half, three and a half percent. And that's almost equal to the rate of inflation. So we're uh, the premium to be in that safe place anymore isn't going to be there. So in my mind, it offers an opportunity, especially as a dividend investor like I am, for some of these names that have been forgotten by the AI and the uh, obesity, um, I'll, I'll say, enthusiasm versus bubbles. So the enthusiasm has been there for these spaces. And as we start to pull back a little bit, I have to feel like everybody will want the government to have lower interest payments. We know that from our discussion about government debt. Everybody will want to have some stimulus going on in the economy because the higher rates have caused some friction in some areas where people are contracting on their investment decisions and, and buying decisions. So I, I think that where we're headed is a more normal place, but I think there are some opportunities in the dividend space, and there are some opportunities for people to take gains in this environment so that they can um, potentially avoid higher taxes that might be the product of you know, if, if the government messes up and lets the tax cuts expire, then we're going to we're going to see a government taking a lot more revenue, but it's going to have a contractionary effect on the overall GDP. So I think that there is some future here of a different environment that we've got to look at from a rate perspective and from a governing perspective that. I don't think they're going to be traumatic because I think there will be some offsets. I don't think that we will see all three go the same way. I think yeah. that we're going to see a mix, and that mix is what we call the uh, the messy middle. And I think the government likes, well, as investors, we like to see the government have difficulty because if they pass too much and they do too much, we tend to see a new environment which makes it hard for companies who have been operating in the old environment for a while to make adjustments that are going to be good for their company. Do you see opportunity in anything besides dividend stocks? Well, well um, yeah, I, I, I don't invest on dividends. Okay. 
Now, I've got a number of stocks that pay, uh, that have some good dividend growth, but I don't really look for dividend yield. I just don't look for that. Um, as you know, I look for uh, companies that generate good earnings growth, are profitable, highly profitable. Uh, I look for low short interest ratios. I look for uh, reasonably attractive valuations using peg ratios. Uh, I look at employee satisfaction ratios. And lately, because I've been concerned about the overall market, I've tried to constrain the overall beta of my portfolio. So, you know, those are the things I look at, not, uh, you know, not dividends. I would say, you know, coming back to what you were talking about with the election, I, I think right now, um, you know, if you had, and it's, it's a guess, right? It's still kind of early. Um, I know it's after Labor Day, but I think it's still, it's still kind of early, right? To see what's going to happen here. Uh, but if I had to guess right now, I think uh, we're going to have Harris win. Uh, but the one thing that I think we all need to be concerned about is that if Harris wins, we're going to see Trump not acknowledge that she wins. And we're going to see, uh, not just legal challenges, but we're also going to see, uh, something that could potentially be much worse. And, uh, I think that might cause some problems for the overall uh well not necessarily the overall economy but for investments uh in the short run a lot more volatility um yeah i think there's I, i'm not sure about your second point which i mean i can't tell what compared to january 6th would be a follow-on and i think that when we look at the Markets, I think the markets would like to see some balance, meaning if Harris wins, we, we see the Senate maybe stay Republican. And in that way, yeah, the way our founding fathers designed this was to help the people with groups that would act as buffers if one group becomes too, too large in one direction. A group of senators who are there for a longer time than a two-year term will exhibit a little bit low, longer term thinking. So I hope that the way things are will um, create what we'll call balanced opportunities. So I, I think that when we look at this election, I think it's a little bit like looking at the Fed. And we can focus, focus, focus on all the different states and which ones are going to be up for grabs and which ones are not and which ones are currently now going from the likely to the uncertain. You know, I, I think that all of this and I think that these polling numbers, I finally noticed that people are getting afraid to predict and they're saying, yes, well, Kamala is ahead in the popular vote, but we know that the popular vote doesn't determine the winner. Hooray! You know, we started to see people actually understand how the election works. And I I want people to be telling us every day, okay, if this state goes from in one direction to a toss-up, you know, there's this many electoral college votes who are not, um, you know, at issue. So I, I think that there's a potential for this election to be like the Fed meetings where it doesn't really matter. And if it doesn't really matter because there is some um, give and take between the different groups in, in, in Washington, I think as investors, we need to try to do what's best for our clients always. So that would be to, to stay the course. And I think the bigger issues are the overpricing in some of the AI names. And in that way, I, I feel that Looking at some of the opportunities, I'd say that international dividend payers and growers, I'm not looking at the dividend payers, I'm looking at growth of the dividends as well as the magnitude, could be a better opportunity. And I, I wonder if the thing that affects people more is that the Fed starts to see lowering rates actually be inflationary and they have trouble with 
continuing to lower rates to the one and a half percent level that they've talked about over the next year. And that slowness of declining rates could be what um, the story becomes. And I think it's going to be an exciting period in America. I think that people have become engaged with Harris um, and having a first woman president. I think that as a country, we we want to see, and I, I think this is a, a part of our past, we want to see change that is good for everyone. And I hope we see that change. And I'm not sure when or how it will impact our portfolios, but I am pretty sure that looking at the fundamentals and looking at the trends, these multiples are too high for this new um, concept of AI. And therefore, we could be cutting it off too early. It could be a 10, 20 year horizon and they, they need to go up more in order to satisfy that. But I don't think so. I think that what we need is to understand where we're paying too much and how we avoid that so that we can have the best long-term returns. Anything else for uh, the outlook for the next six, Bob? No, I think that's, um, I think just that just about covers it. Um, there's, it's very, you know, obviously it's pretty hard to look at the future. You made an interesting point. I, I just would point out that I would reinforce. I hadn't thought about it before now. You know, the Fed, sh the Fed focus is not going to, is going to shift from, you know, when are they going to uh, reduce now to how fast are they going to reduce? And when are they going to stop reducing? Uh, and I think that's, I think that's going to be a new focus and it's going to be the new margin on which, you know, Fed oriented investors are going to be making decisions. Right. So that's a very interesting point. Um, and, you know, if I wasn't clear earlier, I, you know, I just I agree with you on on the benefits of divided government. I think that's uh, that's a very good thing. Um, I do think I mentioned, of course, the risk of. Uh, of potential violence. And, you know, I would say that that risk is less than it was uh, in Jan on January 6, 2021. It's less uh, because you see a lot of potentially violent people who now fear being arrested right. and convicted. And uh, so I think that's you know that's a lot less, but I think there are still folks out there who, uh, you know, who would be convinced to show up to something. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, so we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm being idealistic, maybe, Clem, and you're being more realistic than me. But I'm yeah. just skeptical that the, you know, the response was pretty harsh in terms of people being convicted and people, uh, and I, I feel somewhat like there's, um, there is a greater focus on the different electoral policies. I would love to see us get to a better place where the electoral differences between states were neutralized in some way. I don't think it's healthy for us to have winner take all versus you know, representative districts and every state is different and every state does it, they're, they're counting differently. I, I, I'd love to, give states power, but I'm not sure this power on national elections is making the process better. And I would love to see a more consistent process. Again, an idealistic view that probably not gonna get addressed in the next 20 years, but if we don't talk about them, uh, I don't think we have much chance of getting them done. So thanks yeah, everybody for listening. <laughs> and um, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank The views shared on this podcast represent the personal investment views of the hosts. They are for educational purposes and not meant to be taken as investment advice. Listeners should consult their own investment, legal, and tax advisors. Past performance of any investments is not a guarantee for future return.